We're going to look at the Guild 3 trailer now. Now, um, I got the Guild 2 quite a long time ago, and it was a game I rather enjoyed, but I didn't put a lot of hours into it. But basically, it's the kind of game I tend to like, you know, most of the time and have done for decades. It follows along the lines of a trading game in the Middle Ages, only this one has a dynasty aspect about it, where you uh, raise children, get your businesses bigger, things like that. And it gets more complicated as it goes along. Now, um, the, the Guild itself isn't an expensive game. It's, it's under £30. I think it's about £25 or something like that. So it's a cheap game. And it, I, think, I think it's a £30 game posing as a £25 game. So you're getting your money's worth with this one. But it is very much a type of game that would appeal to people that like to think, like to plan, like to build. It isn't a kind of game where you've got a very short attention span, like you might have in, say, Fallout 4, Skyrim, that kind of thing. It's a very different game. It's a thinking man's game. So um, whilst you might see some of me covering this kind of subject matter on my channel, because I'm into this kind of thing... It might not necessarily be to everybody's taste when they come here for Skyrim and things like that. However, let's watch the video and uh, we'll just you'll be able to see what I'm talking about then. We find ourselves in Middle Europe of the year 1400. The Dark Middle Ages are about to end and a new era begins. The age of the free cities of trading and of the free mind. Welcome to the Guild 3. The Guild 3 is a unique mixture of economic simulation, RPG, and historical life simulation. Your ultimate goal is to create a family dynasty which can last for centuries. One important aspect is making money, so the motto is get rich or die trying. For this, the Guild 3 offers over 25 different professions to choose from, ranging from farmer to barber or tinker, or even grave digger. Each profession allows you to build a business, like the barber's hut, and offer your services and to produce your first goods there and sell them on the nearby market. Over time, you will step away from making your own hands dirty and hire workers and transporters, establish more businesses, and eventually control a crafting and trading empire. But becoming an honest craftsman and a renowned merchant is just one part of the Guild 3. The two other important game aspects are politics, we will come to this later, and the creation and expansion of your family dynasty. Once you have some workers to do the work for you, it's time to get romantic. Find a partner, settle down. If you want, you can marry. The marriage will not only give you access to a new pair of hands to work in your businesses, but is also the starting point to get one or more heirs for your dynasty, as your main character will get older and older and eventually leave the realms of mortals. When you've been diligently producing children, you can control each of them as a playable character. Make sure they get a proper education by stacking crates on the nearby market or hunting rats. Or if you've already made a fortune, you can even send them to school. It's the Middle Ages after all. To strengthen your relations with other important families in your city, you didn't think there was no competition, did you? One of your options is to marry one of your children to one of theirs. This way, you'll even grow your family further, as your new son or daughter-in-law will also become a part of your family and a playable character. And, of course, they can take on the task of getting children. Make sure your ever-growing dynasty has enough shelter for all its members by building a new, more representable house, which will also reflect the rise of your social status. Which brings us to the next important aspect of the Guild 3, politics. The Guild 3 has 14 different scenarios, most of them being well-known cities in the heart of Europe. Your dynasty may dwell in London or Vienna, in Hamburg or Warsaw, in Prague or Paris, and many more. But besides money and new relatives, a family needs power. And power comes with getting yourself known in the city and positioning yourself into an office. Be it the gatekeeper, 
the tax collector, the captain of the guard, the chief judge, or even the mayor. To take office, you'll have to throw your hat in the ring and be appointed by people holding superior positions. And there are multiple ways to get their attention and their approval. Bribing, charming, and even more violent possibilities. But of course, all illegal activities may backfire on your reputation. Still, setting the workshop of a competing family ablaze is a very effective way to dampen their ambitions for a while. Hiring some crooks to kidnap a rival would also do the trick. Also, there are five powerful guilds in each city, like the Guild of Craftsmen, the Freemasons, or the Thieves' Guild. You can try to attract their interest through acting in ways they appreciate. Play as a righteous artisan, or follow a more criminal path, for example. Members of these guilds are among the most respected people of a city as they can rely on the support of their fellow guild members and can take part in special events, such as the construction of a cathedral in a nearby city. The Guild 3 is a sandbox adventure. Whatever path you choose, there are many ways to transform your family into a legacy, your name to a legend. There you go, then. Um, I let the guy talk because, quite frankly, he's explaining the game better than I could. But you, you see what I mean. There's quite a lot going on on it. I always found these games kind of like immerse you in the period quite a lot. So I kind of found them interesting for that reason. There was a few other games like Partition and uh, things like that that were very similar, in, in a very similar vein. And they always left a mark, you know, always left a feeling that never went away with me. And the Guild is one of those games. You tend to get into it and then you remember it forever. Like you might other games like Dungeon Keeper, Total Annihilation, these kind of games, are the, the kind of games that you, you play and you think this is such a good idea, you, you, you always remember it. Well, the Guild is one of those games, although it came after. It, it's like, um, it's kind of refinement of an idea that started many decades ago. So yeah, I like the series. Uh, I do think you've got to be, you've got to be the right type of player to appreciate them. But this is a channel run by a guy that likes this kind of thing. So if you're into a game or you want to try out something that's a little bit different and you want something that requires a bit of thinking, a bit of planning, give it a whirl. I mean, I wouldn't describe it as the best game of its type, but it's definitely one of the standards. So give it a whirl, see what you think.